Okay, so I'm live. Uh, that happened really quick. Um, I didn't realize I didn't have my camera on. But hey, anyway, let me tell you what's going on this week. Brian is not going to be available for uh, doing our weekly Overthinking Comics show. He won't be available next week either. So I thought that instead of uh, just um, uh, trying to do the show without him, he is our comic book researcher after all. Um, I would do something different, something I've been wanting to do for a while, and that is is uh, show a couple of techniques. I've learned a couple of things recently that I think are pretty neat and can really help you do a lot of different things. Um, one of which I'm going to show you tonight, which is I want to show you how to take old art that you've drawn in the past, even years ago, and there's a, a cool feature with, with the vector art in Clip Studio Paint that I think you can use to add a little bit of dynamic life to old boring drawings and even create a uh, new drawing based on that old art. And so let's not waste any time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, let's see here. I'm going to get my window here, which is my Clip Studio Paint. Okay, so now you should be able to see my character here. This is Uriel. He's one of my uh, my favorite characters one, that I've created over the years. Uh, he's got a, a varied history. Um, and what I want to do is uh, show you how to take this old piece of art and I'm going to revive it, make it look more dynamic, more interesting. I'm uh, probably going to change the pose. It's a pretty boring pose. If I were going to do this for real, I'd probably start off by giving a more dynamic pose, maybe shooting at a different angle. Um, but I really just want to show you how to do this tool. So um, if you look to the right where I've got my uh, folder and my um, layer, uh, I've got Uriel on top and there's a folder underneath it. The folder just has other art. If I got, uh, if I did pretty good on time with Uriel, I might try another piece of art or we might switch to a couple pieces of art. I think this one is probably one of the better ones for me to use uh, to revive. There's a lot of things I can do. So um, what I want to show you first is let me prepare this um, Uriel drawing in such a way that we can uh, use it for um, our purposes. The first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this white. If you notice, I, I don't have a background because I just opened this up as a as, a, as an image, as a PNG, which is what it is. And then I went over and I did a save as on the file menu. And um, I have my URL uh, area here. I changed it. The, the original file it would appeared like this. It was a PNG. And I just clicked that box, hit Clip Studio Format. And that PNG is now a, 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 a CPS or CSP uh, file, I believe that's the file for, for that. Um, it's a Clip Studio file now, okay? I'm gonna cancel that. So here I have in my uh, Clip Studio, a piece of PNG art. I've got this white throughout that I don't want. I wanna get rid of that because really what I wanna do is work on the, on, on the black. And the problem is, is if I start using anything to try to race or, or change the lines, that's what ends up happening. Um, also, um, uh, I do want to put a new background on a, a grayer color to help distinguish a little bit um, as I'm as I'm working. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to, I'm going to remove the white. So make sure you have the layer you want to change selected over here in your your excuse me over here in your layers uh, palette. Go over to edit. Click on edit, go down, and you'll see convert brightness to opacity. Click that, and like magic, the white disappears. There's nothing else you have to do to this. The white is gone. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place underneath it another layer. And this layer, I'm going to fill uh, with a paint with a color. I want to use gray, so I came under my color wheel. I got kind of an off-white grayish color, light gray. I'm going to use the paint bucket and I'm going to drop the I'm going to drop the color in there. So it's not a glaring white. Um, the problem with the glaring white is that it it it, uh, it glares at you for one thing, but also uh, maybe a little bit darker than that. 
Um, it gives you a little bit of sense when you start using colors and things like that. It gives you a better idea of, of what these things are going to look look like with a little more contrast. Okay, so because the the white just makes everything like like bleaches out all the color, and so you start trying to go whiter than white, and you can't do that, and so it messes up when you go through your coloring process. Uh, but inking also, I think it's easier on the eyes doing it like this. So I've got the gray background, and you can see without that, all I have is black line art on the layer above. And so now I'm going to turn down the opacity up here on this. Uh, there's a slider right here next to your uh, your menu for your uh, blend modes, right to the right of that. That's the opacity slider. And I'm going to decrease the opacity, just clicking on the, the, the bar until it's something that is, I can see the image underneath, but it's not too, uh, it's not, it's not too hard to use. Okay. Now I'm going to make sure that I have uh, got my, um, uh, my pen tool. Now, if you notice, I've got these, uh, um, my setup is much different. I found, I found artists who set their, their whole workspace up like this. I thought it was a lot nicer, easier to use. So I copied them. My sub -tool, tool palette here, I've got the pen. I, right now I've got on the real G pen. I got on G pen, not real G pen. I've got a G pen. And um, right now I also have um, it with some anti uh, aliasing. I can never say that word. Aliasing, anti aliasing. And if I wanted to, have, I could, I could, I could click the first one. There's none. But I like the, a more smooth look to it, and I'm going to use that for the purposes of inking. Now then, this is kind of neat. Some of you may know this, but maybe you don't. So I'm going to get a, a bigger brush, and I'm going to – whoops. Get that to white. Okay, there we go, black. Okay. Um, oh, the next thing I want to do is, is create a layer above my, my uh, ink layer. You know, I can go ahead and turn that into – a blue line there we go we'll do that i just clicked there's a box up here that has a blue and white uh squares i click that turn my black lines into uh um blue uh, it's a little bit bright so i might turn it down just a little bit dull it a little bit there we go i guess i ended up doing the same thing now that i'm going to create a layer above my uh my old ink layers okay now then, I'm going to show you something that's kind of neat. First off, um, there's a cool thing I like about inking using vector layers. There's several cool things. First off, there, um, there are several different tools. This right here is a is just a line. If you get your object tool or your operation tool, I call it object, you, you can get that either by clicking over here on your, your palette, your tool palette, right? Or you can hit the O key for the hot, for the uh, hot pad, or for the hot number, the uh, hot key, and you click your line. Oops. Oh, that's the other thing I'm telling you about. You can't create the, the vectors if you've got a raster layer. I created the wrong layer, so let me go ahead and select a new vector layer. You have these different, you have three different layers here. So the one in the middle is the new vector layer. And let me draw that line again. Okay, I've got this. I got let me draw a little thicker. So I've got this line here. Let me hit O for my uh, object pen and click on this. And you see all of these uh, points here. You can actually click these to move them around. That's one nice thing. So you can, depending on how you like to, to do things, you could just draw a line around the character, right? And you could be kind of rough with it. And then you could, you know, if, if you uh, make the, the line a little bit smaller, um, reduce the size of the brush, you can do something like that. And you, there you've got a line. And then you hit your O for your object button. And then you can just bring it down each of these nodes here. And now you've suddenly, you can ink like this. This isn't really inking. This is more just... Uh, shaping the line the way you want it. Uh, personally, I don't find this to be 
very efficient. It's easier just to do a quick swipe with your pen than to do something like this. But you know, once you're done, look, you've got this, you've got a line. You you ink this. And if you go in close here, you see it looks really nice and smooth. Okay. So that's one thing that you can do. You can keep messing with it. until you have things just the way you want. All right, so that's one way to do this. I think this is pretty inefficient, but there are some people who just, that's what they like to do. It's like uh, working with uh, 3D almost. You know, if you've used Blender or another 3D uh, program, you can, you can get those nodes or those, those vertices and you kind of pull them where you want them. So if that's what you like to do, then you can certainly do that. Uh, another thing you can do, uh, it, you see how these are circles? Well, maybe you want a sharper point or you want a sharper edge somewhere. So let me click this one right here. I'm going to uh, let me switch over to my mouse. Right click on this. Now you've got these options that you can, things you can do. You can add a control point. You can, uh, you don't have to have that clicked. You can just add a control point anywhere. See, I just added one right there. You can also delete a control point. And here, here's what I like to do, switch corner. So that means going from a round corner, we're going to go to a uh, to a point, the corner right here where, you're, where it becomes pointed, right? So now what that's good for is that if you're going to make a turn, you want the turn to be more, uh, a little bit sharper or like kind of uh, straight, you can switch that corner. See that? See how that changed that? We go ahead and do that again, just in case. Okay, you see how these are are, are kind of wobbly here? It looks like a wobbly line. It doesn't always look great. Let me go ahead. Oh, let me change that again. Okay. There we go. So you see this? This is pretty much just like um, round surfaces and, and a round line all the way around. And uh, it's okay, but there are certain points where you're going to actually want to make that uh, a little more square or, or uh, give give an angle. So switch corner back. And you see how that just cinched it up and tightened it in there? And then if I go on to another point, let's say right here with this one, because this is going into another curve area, I'm going to hit switch corner. And so that's going to change that one as, as well. So then what could happen with this, so let's say I want to have that a little more a, a, a sharp corner. I'll, I'll select the next uh, round uh, node, switch corner there. And now I've got two of these things. I'm going to position it. So now this one is right there at the point that it, it, it kind of comes, it cuts in. And then I want this to be, uh, I want to bring this down. It's more, it's, now I've straightened the line. And see, now that's starting to look a little bit more dynamic. Because what I've done is, is I've put a key points. I've changed it from having a round line, to, a round point to where now it comes in a, a, as a, a straightened up the line a little bit. Okay. So that's one thing that you can do. This is really helpful. I've gone in and in, in, in uh, pages that I've inked previously, I've actually gone in and I've made some of these changes and really improved the quality of the artwork. But that's if it was already. A, uh, a, a a raster layer. Um, if it's not, you can change that. I haven't really liked ch transforming uh, or converting uh, raster images into vector images. So if you have something that's already raster, which is not a vector, vector just is really a um, means that you've got a, a, a lines that are that exist according to a mathematical formula versus raster is more of a line that you create just through uh, your hand. And the, the positives of a vector image is that you should be able to increase and decrease the sign without worrying about pixelation. Whereas raster images, um, ultimately you can do more things with a raster image. So I'm not gonna go into that, but it gets us off topic. I just wanna focus on this. Um, so here we have this method for uh, cleaning up this line. But let's say, for example, that um, I'm going to create a new layer here. I have drawn 
this line here, sometimes it's easy, it's better to just hit the lock and lock the different screens so that it doesn't get confused. I've noticed that sometimes it likes to skip around on me. And so I lock all, I, I try to lock everything that I'm not really using by do, do the vast, the, the uh, vector layer drawing. All right. So let's say that I come, come in here and I'm going to uh, ink this. All right. So I just ink that real quick. Now then hit O and, or click on the image and select that line. You see all these uh, nodes here that are up, up and down? You don't really need those nodes. And all it does, sometimes what it does is um, those nodes can um, affect the drawing in ways that maybe you don't intend for it to be infected. Sometimes they'll bunch up and that can cause problems. It'll create a, a blockage. I wish I could, I could show you that, but it could create a blockage and thin out your lines in certain odd spots. So you don't really need all of these nodes. So, um, Sorry, I accidentally deleted that. So what you can do is you come down here and there is a little uh, correct line, I mean, a little thing here. Um, and if you, it's called correct line. You can access it with the Y key. Come up to your sub tool there. And this can actually be used for different things. Simplify vector layer, adjust line width, connect uh, vector lines, uh, re redraw vector line, uh, redraw vector line width. So there are a lot of different things you can do with this. I want to hit simplify vector line, and I'm going to take that, and I'm going to just drag my brush along that. Okay, I just dragged it over a little section. I'm going to hit O key and select the line. And you see what happened? Remember all those, those things that I hit earlier were uh, circles? Now they're all squares, and there's a, few, there's a lot fewer of them. So let me go back and compare. See this? No squares, all circles. And that's what it looks like before I use my simplify. And uh, the, the simplify is the Y hotkey. So I can take that and I can make that change. O, click on it and see, there's the change. Okay, now then, hit Y, I'll make this, brush a little bit bigger. It just makes me feel better. I'm going to drag it across the whole line. And see, let's see what happens. Okay. O. And you see that? I just reduced a large number of those um, of those circles and squares. I reduced them a lot. Okay. So that has, I've got a lot of the same thing that I had beforehand. Um, now, of course, maybe you don't like this jaggedness here. And so you can go back through and you can start recreating some of these, uh, these nodes and you can select, select multiples of them. Okay. Right click, switch corner. Now you've got those rounded ones again. Click Y, your Y button, create a correct line. We're running across that again. Run it again. And so I'm just doing it a couple times. O. See that I've reduced the number. Y. Okay, stop changing. So I'm going to keep going over here and seeing if this helps at all. Oh, I think I had on here. If I look on the tool property, um, delete short lines. Okay, maybe that's not clicked on here. Oh, here it is. Um, here I can convert the curve. Maybe I don't want to do that. I can convert the curve to, to from, from one to the other. Here, process whole line. So this option here is nice because here you can, by hitting in one place, anything, as long as it's one whole line, you can convert anything, basically. It'll just hit the whole line. It'll do the whole line. Um, oh, okay. Let's unset like that one. Ooh. 
select multiples of these. I'm going to switch their, them all back to curves. Okay. So I went back to this. Now that if I click my correct line over here, and going back here, I turned off my process whole line. And so let's see what the difference is here. Um, hit your O button, hotkey, select the object. Okay. Now then I'm going to hit my hit Y key for my correct line. And let's see, is that do anything? No. So that's probably because I, I already simplified it pretty well. Let me go back. Okay, so now it's back to all these zillion uh, nodes. Let's hit Y for the correct line. And now I, I hit that line. Hit O, check it. See that? It only corrected right there. If I had it cl clicked where I had the um, had it earlier, would do the whole line, just hitting that little spot would have corrected the entire line. But I, I didn't have it. So if I want to do the whole thing, I have to go back through and hit the whole line. O for object. See that? That cleaned up all those really nice. Okay. So the problem with it, this is that sometimes you can't simplify it down enough. If you've got a straight line that you want to do, somebody just select multiple of these nodes, hit delete control point, and now it's more of a straight line. You can turn that, you can switch that node into a square. So now I've got a straight line here. And I don't need all those nodes because all I wanted was a straight line. Okay. I can do the I can do that up here. I can start deleting some of these uh, control points. And I'm only okay, so this now has made this kind of curvy, but I want to have this uh, a straight line. So I'm going to Right click, hit switch corner. Now this is straight. See that? And I'll make this one also switch corner. And see that? And I've got a strong like line. I only needed these three points. Um, now I could do the same. But let's delete that node. I'll delete that node. They call it control points. I keep calling them nodes. So click on the center one, and now you can control the curve between these two uh, uh, points, these two vertices here that are squares. They're straight, and I could get rid of this altogether. And see, now it's another straight line. But that gets kind of boring visually when I have a way to maybe put in a curve in. So I've got this straight right here. I'll juxtapose that with a... Um, curved line there. And so this curved line opposite the straight line over here, that adds more interest to the drawing. Okay, so I, I'm doing all of this with uh, just um, uh, using uh, uh, the nodes, right clicking, making those changes I want to. I've got the tool property window uh, and my correct line. I can do a lot of things, smooth corner, process whole line, um, you can delete short lines, uh, define what a short line is. I'll play that later for myself. Some of the stuff I'm, I'm still using, I, I'm learning how to use it. I haven't used it a lot in the past, but now I'm, I'm actually using it more and more. Let's look at another feature, adjust line width. Click on the adjust line width button under your sub tool, correct line. So I, I've selected out here my tool, the correct line tool. Now I've gone over to the sub tool palette. I've clicked adjust line width. Go to the tool property. You have a lot of options here, one of which is thicken. So if I had that selected, I could come over here and hit that. You see the whole, how the whole line is thickened. So this is an example where if you want everything to have the same, same line weight, then you're going to want to have process whole line clicked. However, if you don't, if you want to make a distinction like up here, there's more shadow, then you might want to have this one.
thicken. So you can see how, see how I'm thickening this line right here. And you can thicken these lines as much as you want to here. Okay, hit O, select. But you see how it's, it, it, it's now we've repopulated everything with all these nodes here. Okay, that's what happens when you start using uh, the correct line is that usually if you want to reduce those, uh, um, the, the amount of nodes, you have to go back over to simplify Victor line once more and hit that. But when you do that, you start losing those uh, nodes and you eventually hit O. See that it reduced back down, you lost your thickness. So those nodes help, by having more nodes, you can increase uh, the thickness. This is useful to do. Like sometimes you can just manually add in nodes and remove nodes in small pores, places if you just want to increase the, the thickness of something. You don't want to do it in a large, plot, a large area because it would take you forever. So go back over here, hit this, hit the uh, correct line, hit the subtool palette button. All right, so let's look at uh, adjust line width once more. Okay, we're gonna go to the tool property, and you can if you can't if you don't see these down here, um, you can look at your window uh, tool property. See that right there? You can click that sub tool correct line. You have all these. You can you can add these back in. Anything that you don't see in your own palette, you can add back in going to the window uh, tab. So let's look at thicken narrow. I'll, I'll give this a, a large number, 10. Let's see what that does. So it's making it skinnier. Okay, now let's hit O. Take a look at it. Now look at this. Even though this line is extremely thin, almost invisible, see, I, I can't even see a line there, but it's got all these nodes here. So it's using the nodes in certain, certain ways to, to tell itself what, you, what to do. Okay, so this can create kind of some cool effects, but it's a, it's a unbroken line. All right, go back, click Y or click on the correct line. Going, we still have on our subtool adjust line width. Let's go to properties and um, scale up width. Put another high thing here. Look how big and fat that made that. Make it a little bit smaller. See, I can. There are different ways that you can affect the lines without having to go over. Like, you know, if, if you're doing a, a traditional like inking, you have a line, but you want to thicken it. You can thicken it like this by going over and over and over and over again and thicken that line. Okay, well, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, if you're using vector lines, <clears throat> hit O and select is you can use the correct line and, and 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 use some of those things. Scale down width. So we're gonna go down by one. It's a little hard to see. Oh, okay, that's so the highest one. So that's not really helping much. Okay. Fixed width. Fixed width is great because it means that you're that no matter where you are, you're going to have the same width throughout. This is really good. I found I was working on the Temple Institute's uh, 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 Megillah Esther or the, the the Book of Esther, um, and I had all these background buildings, and their lines were thicker than the foreground uh, inks. So I used this technique to, to the fixed width. To, to actually uh, knock all that down. And so look at that. Okay, so now then I increase the size from 12 to 173. Let's see what happens when we paint on that. Nothing. Okay. Oh, that's, I hit the brush size. Oops, that's what I have. One thing. Uh, fixed width. Now I get one, about 170. Look how thick that gets. So you can see, but but everywhere you put your 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 brush touches it will only go up by that amount. Okay, or you can go down as to like 0.1. See what happens now? Now it's invisible. It's like you don't have a line there. All right, it's just so small. And but there it is, right there. You see it? It's just barely visible. Go 
that. There we go. Put that. And notice how anytime I pass over these anything, it's always the same size. And that's really, really pretty helpful. Okay, those are a couple of things I want to show you guys. Um, let's get into the nitty gritty of the whole thing. I'm going to select uh, a new, create a new vector layer. And this is kind of a cool thing that I, I figured out recently. And it's a lot of fun. And that is using vector lines to ink really fast, but give yourself some more dynamic lines. And this is what I'm going to do. Watch this. I'm just, I'm just just quickly go through and do all these lines. Okay, it looks like a big mess, right? Hit E for the eraser tool and just start cutting those out. You start cutting these out. See that? What happens is I have my eraser. Let me show you this in just a second. I have my eraser set to uh, um, erase at the intersection point. So where two lines intersect, my eraser is going to cut those things off. Okay, so I'm just kind of going through. And you might think this is kind of slow, but actually it's not just the slow. Look at this. I've created a really dynamic looking line with his hair just by doing that. And you can do that anywhere. You know, you can do, uh, um, I can reduce, I'm gonna make my brush smaller. You can hit the left bracket key to make it smaller uh, for your hot key. And I can just do a line like that, you know, and I can just kind of keep making these lines instead of stopping and worrying every time about um, did I draw that line correctly? I can just keep drawing the line over and over until I get it looking the way that I want. And look at this. Here I am. I've just done this little thing. It's, it's rounded. Those are a big heart, a headache. Hit E for my eraser tool. I'm going to knock out those lines that are not where I want them. Okay. So now I've got this thing here, and I've got this kind of cool cut in. I can even take it down further if I want to. I don't want that part there. I might want to do a, you know, uh, make it more rounded. But look at that. It took me very little time. I didn't have to slow myself down with uh, worrying about am I inking it uh, correctly or not. And then if I don't want to mess with uh things too much i can go in here hit my uh, o and make a selection over here and i can fix any lines i don't like okay but look at this i got this let me zoom in here see see here you see how, how i just pulled this back and i've got this uh, single point here and this end over here and they're not connected so there's something you can do if it works, we'll see if it works. Hit your line correct tool, go to the sub palette, connect vector line. And I'm going to increase my brush with the right bracket key. And we'll go over that and look at that. What happened? Hit your O button. Click on it. Look at that. It joined the lines together. So now this is one line. And so you can do that. Click correct line, sub tool, simplify vector line. Okay, now that I've simplified the line, oops, too much. Okay, O key. Look at this. Now I've got three nodes. And where this point goes, look how it thickens it. It, it controls the thickness of, of this whole thing. So let's say that I want to put this right here, closer to there. I can do a couple of things. I can add in another uh control point right click add control point now i've added the control point 
and I've increased the thickness of the line. Add another control point. Okay, increase the thickness, add a control point. And I can, so I can do this. See, I'm increasing the line width. I can also go over and select my control uh, line, sub tool, adjust line width, go to my properties. Uh, what do I want to do? I want to thicken it, I guess. Maybe scale up. Let's try scaling it up. I just scaled up all that. See that? Oh, gosh. Now then, I got this kind of little designy thing in here. So hit P for your pen. And let's go ahead and draw this thing. Okay. E for eraser. Okay. Oops. Just be careful what you hit. So I want you to look at this. And you see how I did this very quickly. But look at what was underneath there. It's kind of a sloppy looking little head symbol, right? But now I've created something really cool and dynamic looking by using uh, the vector lines and the eraser. Now, you have to have the right things selected for this to work. First off, um, this first off, I'm on a vector layer. So everything I do with these pins, these are all vector lines automatically. But if I want to be able to use the eraser the way I am, click your eraser. And you see you have all these different options here. Notice how you have vector as an option for your eraser. You want to click on that, go to your tool properties, and here you have vector eraser. You see it, you can uncheck and check that box. There are different things you can do. The first one is erase, erase touched areas, erase up to intersection, and erase entire line. So if I do that, I just erase the entire line, okay? Uh, if I if I hit the erase touched area, see, it's only the areas, it works like a regular eraser, only the areas that I actually erase. But this is, is really what makes things fun. And you can now erase the intersection. And you can really neaten up your art. If you have trouble with your artwork being neat, you know, you have all these artifacts and things like this, this is a great way to help you quickly go in and, and uh, uh, fix all of that. So I'm going to go ahead and get my, my pen tool again. And let's just go ahead and get him going. Okay, so I'm going to hit E. I'm going to start cleaning this up. And I like to just do a few of these and then go through and clean things up a bit. Okay, so now I've got this kind of interesting looking nose. Hit P for my pen tool again. Okay, boom, boom. E, gonna erase that little divot there. And so now I get this kind of sloppy looking nose, and I got something a little more interesting here going on. P, I'm gonna hit left bracket, reduce the size of my pen. You have to create intersections to, in order to erase intersections. That's why I drew through there. E, erase, erase. Okay. Uh, I want to erase that. P. All right. Now then, I want to do his eye now. Is that? I guess that's big enough. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Right bracket on your keyboard. Okay. See, here's got kind of a squinty eyes. So we'll go ahead and curve line like that. E, boom, boom, boom. And uh, P, circle, circle. 
y Okay, so now P, I'm going to draw the line a little again. So as you can see, I'm just having fun here creating these lines. Sometimes it gets tricky, tricky when you try to do things internally. So you can make your eraser smaller. Try to get those inside uh, bits that are bugging you. Now, ultimately, you don't have to just rely on your eraser tool. You can grab your object, O, and you can go in there and start looking at some of these lines. And you can carry them away if you want to. Look at that. I just moved that out of the way because what I'm looking for are artifacts that I might want to erase. Like there's one right there, you see that? That's a that, that's a line that doesn't need to be there. And I'll just hit my backspace key and that's gone. I'll move my, I'll move this back in here. And there we go. Um, if, uh, if I'm going to, uh, I can also go over here, hit my line correct tool, go to, connect the vector lines, see if I can fix some of these points where I didn't connect. All right, and then let's hit O, see what's going on with this thing now. Look at this, I can move this sucker out of the way. There are no other artifacts there. Put Control Z, Control Z, there we go. But I might want to go ahead and connect these two vectors as well. Oh. Okay, now then, if you like the eyebrow, you can just leave it there. Although, you can also simplify. So click your, your, your hit Y, and then hit your sub tool for the uh, line correct tool. Simplify uh, vector line, and just go over that real quick. Okay, now then, see, it's kind of taking away all the definition of the coolness you just developed. Well, O, okay, the um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this, this, this control point here, right click it, switch corner. So I've got my point back. Now I want the curve, so I'm gonna need those two. I want these to be sharp though. I like those sharp eyebrows. So I'm gonna switch the corner on both of these. So I want the if I want this wider, look at that. It's much easier to make this change. See how thick I made his eyebrow now? Pretty simple. So you can do all these things it, using your, 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 your vector lines. Oh, that's the correct. I hit the Y uh, correct line. Let's go to correct vector, uh, connect vector lines add these together so it does not like that oh see i connected the things i didn't want connected which happens let's move these over here okay why because i gotta left click reduce the size of the brush okay oh all right, now then, let me see something. It looks like it, it connected all those, but look at that. Ah, see, I don't like that because see how weird that looks? Okay, so let's go ahead and we're gonna simplify. Get your line correct. You can hit Y or you can hit the palette. Go to your sub tool. Find simplify, and then now you can simplify it. Let's go ahead and O. I'll bring this over here. Now then, if you like that, you can leave that there. That's kind of an interesting looking nose, but I want more of a point. Right click. 
uh, delete control point. I'm going to right click, switch corner, right click, switch corner. So you might be saying, well, you just made this cool nose thing. Why are you messing around with it? Well, because I can. And also because I, I wasn't totally happy with it. I, uh, you know, I didn't like the way it ended up looking. And I don't really want that line, so I delete that. You see what you're able to do here is pretty amazing. You've got uh, all this control. Now, the thing you have to be wary of is getting too excited about the control. You know, you could spend hours. And I, I, when, I, when I initially found some of this stuff, I spent hours messing around moving one point to another. And instead of being a uh, saving me time, it ended up costing me time. E for eraser, cut that out, cut that out, cut that out, cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that. See that? P. Okay. I think I wanted that. That's what I wanted. Okay, so now I'm just going to go through and start drawing this guy's face. And I'm going to switch my lines from being straight lines all the time to uh, curved lines to make it just a little bit uh, different, give some variety there, keep the interest there. Make it more dynamic, okay. Sometimes you have to draw, redraw a line through there. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to use the uh, intersection because there is no intersection. Hit E, but now it works. Now that I went through and drew that extra bit, it works now. So there we go. P, I'm going to... Draw this circle. Okay. E. Put those things up that I don't need. Now, one of the things you're going to find out is that if you've got another line layer underneath the one you're working on that what's going to happen is, is that's also going to affect what you're cutting out. P. What I mean by that is that um, if you've got, um, let's see here. You see this line here, E. Not so much hitting this one. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. But if you've got like um, a drawing underneath it, sometimes that will actually affect what you're erasing and that you might have to uh, uh, go over and turn off the under layer sometimes just to make sure that, you know, uh, you got everything. Go hit P, right, straight line, curve out. Route E E Okay, let's try that again. P E There you go. And so this is just continuing on. P E, and you'll notice anything we're doing, as we're doing this, I'm moving fast, but also make things look more dynamic. P, curve line in there, curve line. So on the outside, I've got a, I've got straight lines and I'm doing curved lines. Look at how much more dynamic that makes everything look. E, cutting through there. Now I've got this little thing here. 
And if you, you look and you want to uh, reduce, so you want to cut this line in half, if you've done it in this mode for intersection, you're going to have to draw a new intersection to get rid of stuff. So E, boom, boom, boom. So now it's done. See that? Okay. Let's finish out this line here. P, E, P, T. Okay. Get rid of some of the artifacts that I see right there. Okay, P, and these are much thicker lines. So I'm going to make this thicker. Use my right bracket key, pumping up that line. And so that's too thick. Down a little bit, left air, bracket key. And so all I'm doing is I'm just moving and, and, and going for uh, these, these lines that I want. E. And as I go through it, I'm just knocking away the stuff I don't want. P. E. As long as you remember what you're doing and why you're doing it, you really get some pretty cool results. So... There we go. I'm going to come out just a little bit. So take that head and go back to the original. It's already looking better, I think. P. Okay. And I can just for the circle. Or search, I think it's hard to draw circles. So you can use your whole arm there and just get it until you get the, the lines you want. Okay. And then E, knock away the stuff that you don't want. Some of these things are a little bit trickier than others. So maybe I, don't, I still don't like that. I come over here. I'm gonna hit click. I'm gonna get my Y. Correct my line. I'm gonna get my Connect vector lines in the sub tool. So I come over here and try to find all those things I can connect and connect them together. And then I'm going to hit my O. Look at this thing. Ah, okay, so notice this line and this line are two different lines. And notice that the reason is is because the two lines are actually overlapping. So it's hard for them to connect like this. I don't care about that right now. First, I want to simplify everything. Hit my Y correct line, subtool, simplify vector line. And the first thing I want to do is simplify this line. Okay. Okay, O. Much more simple. And now what I can do is I'm going to take this line back. Okay, Y. Connect vector lines. Try that again. O. And this time it worked. Okay. So now that I, what I want to do is. Um, oh, let me try it over here. Y. Let me see if I can connect these two. O. Looks like that worked as well. Okay. Now then. You know, y. Subtool. Simplify vector line. Let's see what that gives us. Okay. Okay. O. Okay, it's, it's cut those down quite a bit. This is where I'd be more. I, I want to first off put that make that sharp again. I'm gonna switch that corner. 
this has gotten really thin. Very sticky and engaged. So I might at some point want to go ahead and uh, um, thicken that line up. Okay. I'll check that out in just a second. Now, I've, if you've done vector graphics, what you'll use like, you know, Illustrator or Inkscape, what you'll find out is to make a circle, you need to have four points. Okay, you only need four points for a circle. Generally speaking, oval, maybe a little bit more, depending on how you handle everything. So when I come over here, and I want to start deleting some of these, I just want to start off and I want to have as few of these as possible. So I'm going to, I'm going to hit select the ones I don't want, right click, delete control points. All right, so now I've got this wonky looking thing. But now I'm going to start moving this around in such a way that it's going to make the line for me a little bit easier. Oh, there's a problem right there. This is not joined together. But you see, this is already making it a little bit smoother. Change that, delete that. Might be a problem, but I can always go back and fix it. I'm going to hit my Y, my line correct tool, sub tool, connect ve uh, vector points. Right, looks like that probably connected over here. O. Okay. Okay, so I still don't have a lot of points, but I added more in, more than just the four, because I felt like it needed it. And it doesn't matter anyway, because I'm about to thicken that line. Y correct tool. I'm going to go to adjust line width, hit my tool property, and I uh, see how it's thickened this time. Uh, see, so you don't want to do it by four. So I, I selected by four. Okay, good. So now I've got this. Okay, now then. So I got this and I thickened the line. Okay. Now then I want to go back to the sub tool, go simplify vector. Because I already know if I hit O, see all these all these nodes were were recreated. I don't need that many nodes. So I want to try to cut it down and see if I can maintain the line thickness I have or if it's just going to go back to the same. So let's hit Y. I'm already going to simplify the vector line. So I'm just going to kind of come in here and see. It's, I think do I have the whole? Uh, no. Okay. Let's we'll see if I had the, the uh, correct whole line. Okay. O, hit it at one time. That reduced everything greatly. I got this. I got this. It switched my corner on here again. I want to switch that back. Which corner? No, pointing once more. Okay. Move some of those things around. I could even take these and match it up here and um, there we go switch that corner I'm going to get rid of these so now I've got these corners here straight now this is curved Okay. There we go. So look at that. Time is already out. I've been working on this with you for about an hour. Um, I think that was pretty successful. I hope you guys like that, learned something from it. 
uh, you've got to let me know how that was. Oh, hey, Cross came in, and he's still there, I hope. How you doing, Rick? Hope you enjoyed that little quick tutorial there. Um, and anyway, so, hey, you know, next week I'll do this again if you guys like it. And um, maybe work on a fuller, a fuller drawing. I really slowed things down just to show you how the tools work. And I hope that was beneficial to you. I know I said this will increase your speed. And maybe I can show that a little bit more next week where I go through and I can I can speed up the inking process. This is a different way of inking. It's not the right way. It's, 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 it's a way. And um, maybe it's something that you'll like to do as well. Uh, it solves some of the problems people have, such as, um, uh, you know, needing to use stabilizers for the lines they draw. Um, it also uh, takes care of uh, weird uh, lines that you may or may not like. Uh, it saves time from doing lots of erasing and redrawing and doing control Z, control Z, control Z. I felt like at one point I was living in control Z world for a long time. So hopefully that helps it helps you with that. It's kind of a fun way to do it. If you can add in those curves and sharp lines in there and alternate between those, have more control with that, get yourself an even more dynamic looking character. Old drawing is looking better than ever, looking much more interesting than it did to begin with. Even though he's in a boring pose, uh, there's more interest in the character because of uh, I'm, I'm using this technique. So anyway, this is uh, Hillel, New Hero Comics, and I hope to see you guys again next week.